Hello, my name is Omid Safi. I have the great uh, privilege of serving as a professor of Iranian and Islamic studies here at Duke. Uh, and as we're coming on a one year anniversary of most of our teaching having moved over online, I wanted to pause and reflect um, on that important question of what does it mean for us to be teaching human beings without having that face-to-face -face connection with them. I've been teaching students, getting to know students, advising students, writing recommendation letters for students, and at times comforting and counseling students who are crying without ever having had a chance to meet them in person. There's certain ways in which in the tradition that I study, the Islamic tradition, we're always told that the greatest of teaching, the greatest of transmissions uh, is never done through a purely textual study. You learn by studying with a mentor, with a guide, someone who has so imbibed the teachings that they themselves become the text and that this mentor figure, this guiding presence in your life is, as it were, a walking commentary on the text that you're studying. Um, we see this insight in other traditions as well. The great Rabbi Heschel once said, um, we need fewer texts and more text people, more people who have become this kind of a text. Teaching for me is a sacred commitment. The, the classroom is a sacred space. And the students who walk through those doors uh, and sit around the seminar table, whether we are reading the Quran or the poetry of Rumi or Plato or Ibn Sina or listening to Qawwali music or reading Tao Te Ching, the insights that they bring, that process of self-exploration. It's a sacred journey of learning in quest of wisdom. And yet I'm taught in this tradition that the greatest of learnings takes place heart to heart, eye to eye, chest to chest. And I want us to ask a question of what does that look like? in this age of online teaching. Surely, Zoom and all of the similar platforms have opened up lots of possibilities for us. I know that there's certain Pandora's boxes that have been opened that are never gonna be closed again. I, for one, am very happy to have certain meetings that can simply take place online and um, avoid a trip to school for a meeting but those are a minority. One of the issues that I'm still pondering on, and I don't have a definitive answer for, is how do we speak honestly and openly with our students about the fact that we are trying to balance two goods, two virtues, the safety and well-being of our students and their families and their loved ones, on one hand, and that emotional well-being, which comes through human-to-human -human interaction, and indeed the transmission of that deepest kind of joint learning. In the age of bombast and vitriol in which we live, all over the ideological spectrum, our students don't have a lot of beautiful models on how to navigate and negotiate these two goods, these two virtues, we have to develop it together. I've heard some students dramatically pronounce the advent of Zoom as a kind of apocalypse, the end of university life as they knew it. And I try to remind them that the word apocalypse literally always means unveiling, so this transition online has unveiled 
both some heartbreaks and challenges and difficulties that have always been there and some opportunities. May we have the wisdom of finding the best path forward for all of us. Thank you so much for giving me this chance to share these thoughts with you. It's a pleasure to be in this university and a part of this community.